The Sega Nomad is one of the most unique retro gaming handhelds out there, and it's really too bad that it doesn't get the attention it deserves when it comes to mods. I mean, wouldn't it be cool if we could make the Nomad red, yellow, or green? I understand that these consoles are pretty uncommon, but what if your shell gets destroyed? Wouldn't it be amazing if we could just 3D print a brand new one? Well, thanks to the incredible work of Wesk and many others in the retro gaming community, we are starting to get these amazingly highly detailed 3D renders of not only popular consoles, but rare ones too, like the Sega Nomad. So let's take a look. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. So in today's video, I wanted to do something a little bit different and talk about shells. No, no, not seashells or turtle shells, but video game console shells. You know, the part of the console that you actually look at and directly interact with. And more specifically, shells for consoles and handhelds that are rare and uncommon. You see, for consoles like the Game Boy, there are a ton of replacement shell options out there for pretty much any color under the rainbow for extremely affordable prices. On the other hand, for rare consoles like the Turbo Express, Atari Lynx, or even something like the Sega Nomad, there are no aftermarket options available to us. And if not having a way to customize these consoles to your heart's content with different color shells wasn't bad enough, what if the unimaginable happened and the shell of your precious rare console is damaged? Well, in the past few years, there have been some pretty big developments in a little something you may have heard of called additive manufacturing, or as most normal people call it, 3D printing. These things have become so affordable, reliable, and accessible that honestly, it kind of changed the retro modding scene in a big way. So where am I going with all this? Ah yes, with rare console shells succumbing to age, these magnificent things called 3D printers have allowed us to simply print off replacements. And while they're certainly not perfect, they've been getting better and better with each passing year. And thanks to some very dedicated, talented, and dare I say, extremely passionate folks, we actually have a lot of 3D models for not just shells, but CD assembly gears, battery covers, and any other component where replacements aren't readily available. And that's what I wanna discuss in this video. How viable are these 3D printed parts as replacements? Who are the people making these 3D models for us to print? And some of the other ways these 3D printers have helped us give these aging video game consoles a second lease on life. Now to demonstrate these additive manufactured shells as viable replacements, I bought the most beat up and neglected Sega Nomad that I could find on eBay which led me to this fixer upper here. You could certainly say that this Nomad has seen better days. And honestly, I'm not sure what happened to the shell, but it appears that the previous owner tried to perform some open heart surgery or something because it's in pretty rough shape. Now, thanks to a talented 3D modeling guru by the name of Wesk, I was able to print these beautiful Sega Nomad shells. And I have to be honest, they look absolutely amazing. I know it's hard to believe, but I actually didn't 3D print these myself. With the proliferation of affordable 3D printers also came 3D printing services that can print on your behalf. Kind of like today's sponsor, PCBWay. If you have an idea for a new mod or want to assemble an open source project, PCBWay provides you with the tools to make them a reality. From 3D printing services in an array of materials, all the way to other services like CNC machining, injection molding, and of course, PCB and flex ribbon fabrication. So when it comes to taking your retro gaming mods to the next level, PCBWay is the place to make that happen. Check out the link in the description for PCBWay to get $5 off your first order. And again, a huge thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now, if you want some Nomad shells that look exactly like this, I used the UTR8100 transparent resin with a varnish coating, which is what gives this ultra clear glass-like finish. It's the same exact material that I used for my Ultra Slim PS2 project, which was also created by Wesk. If you want to check out that video, I left a link to it down below in the video description. Anyway, let's see just how good of a fit these shells are, and if they are indeed a viable option for those that need a replacement shell for the Sega Nomad. 
All right, so obviously the first thing we need to do is take this thing completely apart. And I have to say it's pretty dirty, so we'll clean things up along the way. And right off the bat, I see that this screw is not really holding the two shells together like it's supposed to. The well for the screw is completely gone, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it in since it's not really holding anything together. I really wonder what the previous owner did here. Anyway, let's just continue to disassemble the console. Okay, so here's the power jack, and it looks like we have a broken solder joint here, so let's go ahead and fix it. I'm gonna remove all the old solder with my desoldering gun, and then use some fresh solder to get some good solid joints there. Next, let's address the LCD. All I'm gonna do here is apply some flux to the ribbon cable and then just reflow the existing solder and just hope that it fixes the issue. Man, just look at this speaker. It is really filthy, so let's go ahead and give it a quick clean. And let's give the buttons and membranes a good cleaning also. Ah, that's much better. Nice and clean. Now let's go ahead and disassemble the rear part of the console, which houses the Nomad's motherboard. Now the first thing I was going to replace with a 3D printed part was the cartridge flap cover. But unfortunately, the part that allows it to pivot open and close is too thick, causing it to get stuck and not return to the closed position. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the original one instead since it works perfectly fine and is in good condition. My guess is that the varnish coating on the flap made it just a bit thicker than it should be, causing the issue. Anyway, now let's go ahead and start to assemble everything back together into the new shells. Now the first thing we want to do is pre-tap all the screw posts. Basically, we're just going to carefully fasten all the screws in and out of the screw posts to create threads. By doing this carefully before assembly, we ensure that we do not crack or break the screw posts by accident. This is a crucial step, so don't skip it. Again, all you need to do is slowly fasten the screws in and then fasten them back out. Once you've tapped all the screw posts, we can continue to assemble the Nomad.
And here to finish things off, I removed the label from the original shell and slapped it onto the new one. And that's it, we're all done. I have to say that I am really amazed with just how well these came together. And honestly, the clear shell looks absolutely stunning. Being able to see the internal circuitry really just looks so cool, and I even went so far as to not even use the rear RF shielding so we can get a better look at those really beefy integrated chips inside. I mean, the before and after is night and day, and thankfully everything works just great. The buttons and D-pad feel good, the power switch slides freely, and the new shell even works perfectly with the laser bearer battery pack, which I'm sure you've all noticed is also 3D printed. I think it's no surprise at all that these shells are perfectly viable as replacements. And honestly, the results as demonstrated here can be quite incredible. And thankfully, I was able to address the screen issue, which is now working perfectly, or as perfectly as a Nomad screen can look, since it still looks pretty washed out, but that's par for the course on these older LCDs. And by just simply reflowing the solder on the power port, I was able to fix that as well. So effectively, this completely mangled Nomad has been given a new lease on life. But the shell, which is something we literally didn't have an option for, is now looking good as new. And honestly, I think it looks better than new. I think we can all agree that the translucent shell looks fantastic. I even like the small amount of light bleed coming from the LCD, since it sort of illuminates the circuit board inside. It's a sort of unintended perk. But that's enough about the shell. We've established that it looks great. I really want to spend some time now talking about the folks that make these 3D prints all possible. These are the modding community's unsung heroes, because while the 3D models for replacement parts may not be the most fancy, in-your-face mod, they are nonetheless vital for the survival of these aging systems, helping extend their life. Now, for longtime viewers of the channel, Wesk will be a familiar name. He made or helped make some incredible projects that I featured on this channel, like the Ultra Slim PS2, and the GameCube Nano. I mean, he even made the intro to this video. Yeah, the one with the slick 3D Sega Nomad and recreation of my studio. Really just a talented guy and obviously gifted at making 3D models. Now the 3D model of this Sega Nomad shell was created by Wesk. He scanned an original shell using a 3D scanner to get a rough high resolution rendering and then spent a lot of time refining it so that it can be easily 3D printable. While I'm told it's not difficult to clean up and refine the raw 3D models, it does take quite a bit of time and effort to get into a printable state. And in addition to the Nomad, Wesk has tirelessly scanned and posted, for free mind you, 3D models of a ton of different shells of different consoles and controllers. His repository on Bitbuilt is an incredible resource which helps to preserve these consoles. I mean, as we are all aware of, these shells for retro consoles are by and large not made anymore and haven't been for decades in most cases. So these 3D models, while perhaps not usable in their current state, provide an indispensable foundation for anyone who would like to make these 3D printable or injection molded versions. And with a bit of elbow grease, anyone in the community can do the work required to clean up these 3D scans and make them suitable for 3D printing. Or if you're skilled with CAD-based software, the scans can be used as a clear and accurate reference for full-up recreations. I think Wesk's mission is to basically scan as many of these shells as possible and provide a one-stop shop for those that would like to take the time to make these into usable 3D printable models. Either way, it's a huge asset to the community that provides a foundation for us to reproduce legacy components, like the Sega Nomad shells. Creating these intricate 3D scans is a labor of love for Wesk, but it comes with its fair share of costs. Procuring some of these consoles, especially the rarer ones, can be an expensive endeavor. Your support can make a significant difference in keeping this project alive. If you appreciate the effort that goes into these scans, kindly consider supporting Wesk through his Ko-Fi page, which you can find linked down below. Now, it's not just Wesk who is tirelessly creating useful 3D models for the retro modding community but also another individual by the name of Dennis, or as he's known by online, Pointer Function. He too has a repository on the Printables website under the name Retro Game Revival, with a ton of incredibly useful, ready to print replacement shells. And not just shells, but also components, many of which are for replacing parts on consoles that tend to break with age, such as the drive gears for CD assemblies, or other miscellaneous parts that are prone to being lost or failing over time. For example, Dennis has made 3D models for the PS1 pickup movement gear, 
as well as the unique Sega CD Helix Drive gear, which is a really odd component for moving the laser assembly up and down. These gears are weak points in the design of these complex mechanisms, but now we have a way to fix them and preserve these consoles for many more years. Also, for the Panasonic Q, which has a notoriously weak CD tray, Dennis also created a complete replacement ready to be printed and popped into the console. For parts as innocuous as the battery cover of a Game Boy Light, or the Hue card slot cover for the PC Engine Duo, all the way to full up shell replacements like this one for the NES. It's honestly amazing the amount of resources we have available to us today, thanks to the work of these incredible folks. Without these dedicated enthusiasts within the retro community, none of this would be possible. You can also support Dennis directly on his Ko-Fi page or his printables page where he has all of his designs freely available. I'll have a link to everything down below. Now I have to say, it's not just Wesk and Dennis who are doing this type of work. It's really an entire community of dedicated people who are contributing. People like DeVizix with his replica Neptune shell, Laser Bear Industries, and Todd of Retro Frog. There are just so many people contributing, both large and small, that I can't name every single one in a single video. But I am extremely thankful for all their contributions. It's really just incredible to see how far we've come in such a short period of time, and just how big of an impact 3D printing has had on the retro modding hobby. 3D printing has been a game-changing technology with what seems to be an endless amount of application to retro console repairs, modding, and more. I really can't wait to see where this technology goes and how it will evolve in the future. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I really think you'll like this one here, so check it out. And as always, thank you all so much for tuning in today, and I'll catch you again next time.